Now, normally when we um, have covalent compounds formed, they're sharing electrons and overlapping orbitals in order to achieve an octet, eight valence electrons. There are exceptions to this general rule, though. Um, there can be exceptions to the octet rule in the cases that they might actually have more than an octet in their circle, in their boundary. Um, elements in period three or higher can actually hold more than an octet because they have those 3D, uh, 3D orbitals available to hold all these extra electrons. Um, elements in group, um, sorry, elements in period two only have a 2S and a 2P to fill, whereas in elements in period three have a 3S, a 3P, and a 3D to actually um, have electrons enter. The other exception is when boron can hold uh, less than an octet. It's generally seen with boron in many cases. Um, so boron can actually be relatively stable with only having six around um, the nucleus. So except exceptions to the octet rule. Elements in period three or higher can hold more than an octet. Um, boron is the example that can hold less than an octet. And when there is more than an octet, you can have 10, 12, or even 14 electrons in that um, area. Okay, here we're actually going to draw out some of those exceptions to the octet rule. So remember, an atom can either hold more than an octet or less than an octet. If we look at ClF3, the first one listed is chlorine. Now, looking at chlorine, it has seven valence electrons. It only needs to form one bond but then you have three fluorine atoms that are trying to bond to it. So, um, well, let's start with chlorine in the middle. Now, chlorine, if you look on the periodic chart, is in period three. Um, fluorine on the periodic chart is in period two. Since fluorine is in period two, it only has the 2s and the 2p available to hold electrons, whereas chlorine is in period three on the periodic chart. So we know that we have a 3s available, a 3p available, and a 3d. So by um, matter of process of elimination, you know chlorine can actually hold more than an octet and not fluorine. So chlorine is going to go in the middle, and we need to bond three fluorine atoms to it. So let's place three fluorine atoms around the fluorine. Chlorine, looking on the periodic chart, has seven valence electrons. I'm going to do his with an X. Um, this fluorine atom also has seven valence electrons. As does the other two. Um, fluorine only needs to gain one more, so let's make this terminal atom stable by borrowing one from chlorine. Okay. This fluorine atom only needs one more to be borrowed from chlorine. That's where our drawings get a little funny. This fluorine atom also only needs to borrow one from chlorine. And then chlorine has one, two, three, four, because if it loaned one, it's receiving one back. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it has a total of ten around um, the chlorine atom, but that's okay because chlorine is in period three and it can hold more than an octet. So if you draw your structural formula, I'm sorry, your Lewis dot formula as is. That's fine. Let's think about how we should arrange things in our structural formula. Chlorine is in the middle. We have a single dash going over to fluorine. Single bond. Single bond coming down to this fluorine. Single bond going over here to this fluorine. Now, unshared electrons that are left over on this um, central atom. We have two up top. Now, I drew this so um, sometimes when you draw this, if you split these electrons, that's fine when you're trying to figure out the Lewis dot structure, but when you go to draw the structural formula, electrons are always going to be traveling in pairs, and they're not going to be split up and um, be in separate orbitals. So we're just going to pair those up and put them on the side somewhere, rather than 
leaving them separated, okay, because electrons travel in pairs. Okay, and then you can include all the unshared electrons left over on the fluorine atoms. And there you go. Chlorine can hold more than an octet. Okay, BF3, boron. It's in period two, so it cannot hold more than an octet. So let's see what's going to happen and see whether or not it can hold less than an octet. Boron is in period two, and it's in group 3A, so it has three valence electrons. And then I need to bond in three fluorine atoms. Okay. Each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons. Chlorine only needs to bar one to achieve eight. Chlorine also needs to only bar one to achieve eight. Plus fluorine also needs to bar one to achieve eight. So in each case though, if you bar one, you need to donate one back. Fluorine then ends up with one, two, three, four, five, six. It's only six electrons, it's less than an octet, but it is an exception to the general rule. And this compound does form, and it's generally um, very reactive because it does um, try to achieve that um, full octet by gaining two electrons from someone else. Here's our structural formula, and then you can add in all the unshared electrons left over on each fluorine. Okay, we just did more than an octet, less than an octet, and now we have XeF4. Well, basic rule of thumb, the one in the middle is generally our middleman, the atom that's going to be the central atom, and other atoms will bond around it. So we have xenon in the middle. Now, hopefully at this point you're questioning why is xenon even in this compound? Uh, xenon is a noble gas. I've told you they do not form compounds, they do not react to form ions. However, at this point, if we go back and um, take a look at those general atomic size trends, remember as you move down a group, atoms get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, xenon is pretty far down on the periodic chart. As a matter of fact, it's in period five. So it has electrons in the fifth energy level. It's a pretty big atom. So in that case, those atoms, since they're so far away from the nucleus, those outside, or outside valence electrons actually do tend to um, bond with other atoms in the case of XEF4. Okay, so here we have xenon. Xenon has eight valence electrons. Now I need to bond in four fluorine atoms. Each fluorine has seven valence electrons. This foreign only needs to borrow one, but in turn, we'll donate one back. Fluorine will borrow one. In turn, we'll donate one back. This fluorine will borrow one. In turn, we'll donate one back. And this fluorine only wants to borrow one. And in turn, we'll donate one back. Uh, xenon ends up having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A set of twelve um, electrons within the xenon atom. But that's okay because we did mention that when they hold more than an octet, they could have ten, twelve, or even up to fourteen electrons within that boundary. So to draw the structural formula, we have xenon in the middle, single bond to this fluorine down here, and here, and here, and to that fourth one. Now we have to remember to um, look at any unshared electrons that are especially around that central atom. We have 
two electrons over here, one there, and another one there. Now remember, during your drawing, if you do split any of these electrons up, make sure you pair them on your structural formula. So we actually have two pairs of electrons that are left over unshared by anybody on the xenon central atom. And again, fluorine, each of them do have six. And then you have the structural formula of Xe, F4. 